Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Vancouver, British Columbia for OpenStack Summit. Uh, I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Brian Gallagher, who is the president of the cloud management division at EMC, uh, CUBE alum, been on CrowdChat, asked Brian G a few times. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great to be back, thanks for having so me. So you got the jeans on, open shirt, Cloud Foundry t-shirt, where's the hoodie? I no, mean, <laughs> no hoodie, I mean. It's warmer than I thought it would be in Vancouver, <laughs> so the hoodie's back in the room. Uh, great to <laughs> see you, you got a new role. Tell us what's going on with you. Um, obviously EMC, huge, huge splash in the pool here at OpenStack, yep. Cloud Scaling Acquisition, and then at EMC World, just that shift towards openness and software and open source with Randy Bias and, and yep. others on your team. What's going on? And you got the emerging group under CJ. A lot of melting pot of stuff happening. You're involved in all this. What's going on? A lot in that question. <laughs> so I'll try to break it down, but I think if you kind of take it to the highest level, this is in response to the secular shift that's occurring in IT. And Joe Tucci talks about it you know, all the time. And it is different, I mean, in every regard when we look at moving from client server into cloud computing and mobile access to IT and infrastructures and applications and data. Everything's different. I mean, from the way infrastructure is built to the way software is built to the whole process, completely different mindsets, completely different methodologies. A lot of the same problems are still being resolved again, but it is a completely different world. And uh, the dress code's also <laughs> different. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, the, uh, the, the jacket and tie are, are no longer part of it, but you know, it's a, the world is much more community oriented as we, as we look at uh, platform three. And open is a requirement. It's becoming fast a purchasing requirement for uh, customers that are building out uh, their IT infrastructure. Uh, so there's a lot going on. So back to EMC for a minute. Um, I'm spending time in the space of Platform 3 and really working on making the intersection of Platform as a Service and Infrastructure as a Service work better together. Um, it works pretty good right now, there's a lot you can do, you can get to innovation very quickly, but there's some speed bumps. Um, there's some things related to persistence uh, with the 12-factor 12, uh, 12 applications and how do we deal with those types of challenges. So there's a lot of problems to be solved but I'd say the communities at large, you look at the two open source giants, OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, um, let's make them work better together. Yeah, we had Sam on from Cloud Foundry. Obviously, huge success. They've had great success. I mean, they get a lot of industry support, ubiquity from the big players. You had a great career at EMC, building out data centers with drives and enabling the storage industry, right? And that created great value and for customers and EMC made a lot of money on that. But now, as you talk about this platform three, this emerging world, it's a confluence of cloud. You got big data in there, you got software, and you got Isola and all this stuff in EMC, and then you got the StreamIO and the core group, it's Flash, probably more horsepower, so this platform two and a half, so, so you're going to go recreate platform three and it's software, right? A little bit different than the hardware business. So what's your take on that? As someone who's seen the growth on that Gen 1 infrastructure, now you're looking at now Gen 3 with Platform 3, what, what, what's your take? What is, software is lead, right? I mean, obviously that's key. Uh, and what, what lessons can you learn bringing that over? Yeah, great question. I think um, at EMC we've got about 12,000 engineers and only 400 do hardware. So the core of what we do, even in the core technology group and the, uh, the emerging technology group, the value really is in software. There's, very, there's no proprietary hardware anymore, which is quite a shocking statement <laughs> from you know, back in the late 90s and beginning of this, uh, this decade, or this millennial. And so um, the value that customers see is in software, but I'd say you know, the, the requirements from, you know, from customers' perspective of, hey, you know, we like this new model of open, open source, we like this new model of platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. What I heard in Paris in December at the OpenStack uh, Summit was, 
hey, we this is directionally correct, we're, these are from customers, this is where we're going, right? But can you make it work like the other stuff did? Because yeah. I'm still getting my, my bonus checks based on you know, availability, all the metrics, all the operational metrics of that. And I think that's where you know, EMC has added a lot of value, um, is to make sure that as we transition into the new world uh, of OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, other platform as a service, uh, ensuring that the customer's requirements are met from a governance risk and compliance. To get going, a lot of test and dev gets moved out you know, to public clouds, but when people are starting to operate their business, they're saying, hey, hybrid is where it is, that's where I need to be, and can you make the hybrid approach work much more seamlessly? Yeah, you know, Brian, it, it's interesting. I mean, you, you, I, I was at EMC for 10 years, you know, attend a lot of meetings with you. Um, you know, some of those fundamental shifts, we, we always, never know how they're going to go. So when, you know, Symmetric switched over to an x86 architecture, I mean, there's tons of planning, really concerned, make sure that it's going to work for customers. And went really smoothly and was, it was almost like, uh, you know, not, not a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the same transition going on with open source software, COTS hardware, uh, you know, EMC brings some adult supervision to, to some of these and, you know, knows how to deliver the enterprise, you know. Wh what do you see as EMC's role in kind of the whole open, uh, open stack uh, environment here? Mm -hmm. and you know, how does EMC take those experiences and, and, and bring them to this environment? Yeah. I think the, so this community um, gets the, you know, the challenges around infrastructure. You know, clearly there's a lot of challenges at the, at 10,000 feet, things look pretty simple. At the operational layer, if you, you know, sitting in the sessions, it's all about how do we get to repeatability, consistency, can we get some better automation, you know, make deployments a heck of a lot easier. So the industry, as well as EMC, will continue to invest in these areas. Um, at the platform layer, it's a different world, and uh, applications are built differently, as well as the infrastructure. There's a higher reliance on resiliency being built into the application, not necessarily uh, in the infrastructure. And I think where uh, EMC uh, can add a lot of value is bringing those concepts into platform as a service around resiliency, persistence, um, around things that protect information, things that allow businesses the uh, ability to sleep well at night, knowing that if there's any problems, their business is protected. And those attributes are still important. Um, I think uh, where we have built our, our business on is gaining that trust in the data center uh, with customers, and now it's establishing that trust with new customers, or same customer base, but new buyers, if you will. Um, and w there's clearly a lot of areas that we can add value in. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you hit on a key point there. If I, if I look at the application space, I mean, customers are reticent to change. That's how what I run my business on, and, and trying something new <laughs> is a challenge. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, uh, th there's a dojo that you guys uh, you know, are going to have in Cambridge. Uh, you know, how is that going to help span that gap, get customers comfortable with you know, the Platform 3 stuff, and, and help move them along that, uh, that, that move to the, the new kind of cloud native right, type applications? Right. So I must bow to start this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're uh, no splits today. You know, though, it's right? funny. Some people don't. You know, I know what a dojo is because I, I trained in uh, karate for many, many years. And some people are like, "What does it mean? De development ops, join ops? Is it an acronym?" And it's like, no. So the, <laughs> for those that, uh, and most of this community knows about dojo because it's you know how how software is uh, developed. But the translation is the place of the way. And if you, you know, the analogy being with karate, it's where uh, you went to learn from the masters, you went to learn the way. Nothing was really written down, right, when you look at it. A lot of books on martial arts, but not necessarily on the technique. And, and the only way to do that is hands-on training, you know, being physically there and, and, and doing the work. And so EMC, uh, in March, on the, uh, March 19th, we announced the first Cloud Foundry Dojo, and uh, it is a six-week training program, um, and it's modeled after the original dojo that was uh, started in San Francisco. And uh, it is a program that will teach uh, developers about Cloud Foundry. They'll train them in open source, out of it they will become contributors to the open source community. 
And um, they also learn about paired programming, test-driven development, and the overall methodology of Agile that's deployed uh, within this community. And I think it's really great. I think uh, we've got a guy going through that training right now. He's in uh, the third week. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that. As development, as open source development communities scale to large scale, I think the concept of Dojo should be uh, you know, kind of osmosed across all open source projects. There's yeah. a lot of benefits to it. It's you very get, community driven too. It's community driven. Um, it is systematic, but it's not, you know, there's no, not, not, not a lot of governance on it. it, it you're not, not going to find a lot of documentation about it, but it is hands-on training with committers, rotating through, and, and where EMC's going to focus our developers on, on open source contribution is uh, the bottom layer of Cloud Foundry, Bosch, uh, which does the cloud uh, management and deployment of applications. And we're going to start working on some problems around you know, data, data security, uh, persistence, uh, things of that nature. Yeah, kind of bridging the bat platform two to three, which is EMC's thing, and David Goulden's like, oh, platform two and a half, which is kind of like just saying extreme IO. Basically, it's going to drive that. A lot right. of performance going on in the hardware, in the servers, in the storage. At the same time, this new software model lays on top of it. Right. So, you got to shift that mindset. And how do you get that going? I mean, EMC, we were at EMC World commenting to Jeremy Burton and Jonathan Martin and, and, and Guy, like, EMC has never been known for having a big community that's always had great customer service, right. great sales-centric, great uh, innovator but they didn't really need a community because they were rolling out drives and storage. But now in the past five years, that software focus you mm -hmm. mentioned has been big. So, you know, what's your take on that community initiative? Do you think EMC's got the right stuff? You think they can, they're going to throw money at it? They're going to, what are they going to do? What are you going to do? Right. How do you get the community going? Yeah, great question. I think part of it, um, clearly in client server, we had great brand recognition, mainframe great brand recognition. And I think it's the same thing here, which is EMC's value proposition in the new world of Platform 3. And, and it is, it's about software, it's about the assets that uh, we have, but more importantly, it's taking a lot of the learned concepts and applying them in different ways. Um, you know, we've got great technology across the product lines uh, from our core uh, uh, technologies division, our emerging technologies division. And I think in the world of Platform 3 is how do we leverage that value in a different way? For example, DSSD, you've heard a lot yeah. about DSSD. Um, you know, great opportunity to accelerate uh, applications. Um, what if in the software-defined world we knew the infrastructure had that capability? Could we do a better job at deploying Redis or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, other in-memory databases, NoSQL type data stores in memory on DSSD? Um, having that knowledge up so we could, you know, broker the application workload yeah. to the right infrastructure. I got to ask you, you're a senior executive, been a huge, huge EMC executive, running a big part of the business, which means P&L, gun to the head, make the numbers, to now a creative role, you know, and I quote the old Steve Jobs when he had one of the most creative periods, when he had a lot of stuff he can get his hands on, get a little roll up his sleeves. You're kind of in this new role, but you're bringing that history of EMC in. What's your mindset? I mean, as someone who you know, studied karate, obviously the dojo kind of concept's happening. What's your mindset? How are you approaching this new challenge from a Brian Gallagher you know, executive and personal standpoint because it's, it is a roll your sleeves up, it's get down and dirty, it's how to have some fun, new transformation, you're in the, the future build out of EMC, it's like you are part of the future creation. Mm. What's your mindset, how are you attacking this new job and how are you recruiting people, how are you getting people motivated? So I'm a big fan of the trilogy, The Matrix. <laughs> We got VMAX named for a reason, right? <laughs> Virtual matrix, so. So my answer to that is uh, in October, I took the red pill, <laughs> right? So if you remember Morpheus saying, you know, you can take the red or blue. Blue, you just go back to life as you know it. Red, we'll see how deep the rabbit hole goes. So in October, I took the red pill. And it was a, I, not that I wasn't familiar with it, but became much more intimate with what's happening in this space. The innovation, the, you know, the ability to accelerate innovation is huge. And um, I think this whole notion of DevOps, right, on, on platform as a service built on infrastructure as a service is compelling because you don't have to write everything over and over and over again. You can deploy microservices and you can publish without having to worry about, hey, is this only going to work on this cloud 
I've got cross-cloud portability of my applications and, and content. So after the initial reaction, I tried to stick my finger down my throat and throw the red pill up. <laughs> um, but I, I you know, haven't jumped in with two feet. The other thing is, you know, back to the movie The Matrix, is you, know, you gotta free your mind. Yeah. And if you remember the jump scene, um, you know, when they jump the buildings. Yeah. And, the, and the first time, you will fail. You might hit the bottom, you know, but you'll bounce back up. But I think, you know, taking those lessons and then applying it to the, to the new world has been I mean, you've got a creative helpful. canvas now. I mean, you've got, you got some, I don't want to say latitude, but I mean, you've got some mandate. But certainly, this Platform 3 is still not fully defined. We heard that at EMC World. And you can see here at OpenStack, it's maturing. Mm -hmm. It's not a mature market. So, I mean, you got to get, kind of intoxicated a little bit on that fact that, you know, there's some unknown um, challenge, um, but opportunity. Right. Um, cool, and who's your team? Explain some of the things going on with the team that you have working with you, yep. um, and what's going on in the organization. So we're building a great team. Um, uh, we've got Edith Levine from our CTO office. Uh, she's been doing a great job, you know, kind of knocking through some of the projects and then lining up things that we're going to be uh, doing next. Brian Roach just joined us. Uh, he's going to be running the uh, engineering focus in the dojo in Cambridge. Uh, guy came on board, great uh, asset. He's working with the pivotal folks in, uh, in San Francisco. Uh, Luke, I can barely pronounce or spell, I can spell his last name, but he's a, a great guy working over at, uh, on Howard Street uh, with the pivotal team. We've got uh, new members coming on board over the next uh, three to four weeks. Uh, a lot of kids right out of school that have no preconceived notion of how stuff should be done and, uh, and coming in with great questions, great ideas, great suggestions. Um, so it's a mix, uh, internal folks, uh, external hires, college students, uh, you know, getting a really good list and I'll say, we run them through an interview process uh, from the Cloud Foundry team, and a lot of the folks that have uh, come through have scored very high off the charts in their their interview uh, process. So we're getting, you know, building a really capable uh, team in this space. Yeah, Brian. So you know, wondering if you could share how you can, your team is interacting with kind of the rest of EMC, uh, because I, I know Tucci, you know, heard feedback loud and clear from the customers. You know, open source is a big piece of what you guys need to be doing. Yeah. Um, there's there's people inside EMC. I mean, you, you yourself are going through is it some some changes here. Mm -hmm. How much is it your team leading the way? How much will it be you know, kind of antibodies sweeping through and, and adjusting the current workforce? And how much is going to shift? Yeah. So I think you'll hear more uh, probably later this summer, you know, beginning of the fall. Um, you know, we're working together, you know, with our uh, partners across the functions at, at EMC and identifying, you know, key projects. There's a lot of what you heard a lot of it at, at EMC World. You know, what are the things that are going to be contributed? Stay tuned, there's going to be more. Um, you know, what we announced with Copperhead was just a start. You'll see more and more of that. And then the model is really about value, right? In terms of where does, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that we're contributing that has a lot of value into open source, but there's other areas that, um, you know, have even greater value, you know, that will be, um, you know, kind of core part of our, our portfolio uh, moving forward. So I, I would say, you know, roughly late summer, beginning of, of fall timeframe. And you know we're already making contributions both in the OpenStack community and in the Cloud Foundry community. So those are ongoing. Where first project that we did with the team um, was help to provide UAA, you know, authentication to Bosch. And so that works ongoing now. The team's been doing a really good job. And you get the bi-coastal situation. Yep. This is nice, right? That's yep. going to be key. I mean, it's kind of like the Wikibon Silicon Angle teams. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll be able to also do paired programming between the coasts as well. Great, any events planned, I mean, or is We're going to have early a, on? a series of meetups in Cambridge, um, okay. so we'll be kind of getting those out in the social world, um, you know, focused on specific topic areas uh, that are near and dear to our hearts, and then we're talking about other uh, related events, you know, things like hackathons and other that we might want to uh, yeah. sponsor. Oh, the dojo will be creating yeah, that, enabling that mindset. You know, the hackathons will come out of that when people start getting going on the, on the, on the coding. Yep. 
All right, well, any, anything else you'd like to share with the, with the crowd here? Certainly we're big fans of what you're working on. Great role, uh, super excited for you. Um, obviously, there's so much work going on. Build out is happening. Sessions are packed and people literally sitting on the floors getting into some of these sessions. So it's been, it's, yeah. a, it's an engineering build out mode right now. Yeah. So any, anything you'd like to share? Yeah, last closing comments. The um, level of excitement is huge, right? So last week at the Cloud Foundry Summit, this week at the OpenStack Summit, and uh, energy levels are high, uh, the excitement level is high. I always show the face of excitement. <laughs> That's me, yeah. but I am super excited about what's going on here and, and also uh, in the other open source communities. Yeah. Got a great opportunity, Greenfield in front of you in a way, so a lot of good stuff happening with EMC as well in the Federation. So you got a lot of stuff to play with, the, the, the toy box is full of goodies and there's some new stuff coming out, certainly agile and cloud, certainly dynamic. Uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back. This is Brian Gallagher, the president of the EMC Cloud Management Division. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, right after this short break. <laughs>